Okay, so that first example of a tape diagram was basically we're making a tape diagram, a basic tape diagram using the ratio, and then we are given one of the pieces of information. In that example, we were set, you know, we were told there are this many boys, and then you could kind of figure that out, how much each group is worth, and then figure out the total of girls. This is an example, this is the first example we did in class today, and this example is, let's see if this is the total or the whole one, this was the, uh, this was where we're going to take the total of everything that's included in the tape diagram. So the, the basic idea of starting off with making the tape diagram begins the same exact way. So if we read this whole thing, you know, a superintendent of highways is interested in the vehicles that travel within his country. I don't blow through it like that in class, I promise. In the month of August, we've got a total of 192 registrations were purchased for passenger cars and pickup trucks. So there's a total of a 192 registrations. And then the DMV reported that in the month of August, for every five passenger cars registered, there were seven pickup trucks registered. So right here we have the ratio of for every five cars, there are seven trucks. So we've got, you know, five to seven, and that's the cars to the trucks, really. I'm not actually going to break it down into these individual sections like we did in class. I'm just going to straight solve it. But pretty much these questions and the ones on the next page are going through the same process. So we have our ratio of five to seven as the cars and the trucks. So the next thing we would do is we would make that tape diagram. So we have cars, and we have the trucks. And so we have five cars, one, two, three, four, five. And then we have seven trucks. Okay, so five cars to every seven trucks. And now what this one was saying was, it says, how many of each type of vehicle were registered in the, in the county in the month of August? The difference with this problem is it doesn't tell us, you know, it doesn't, for example, say there's 100 passenger cars. So we can't say, oh, if this is 100, I can divide that into 20s. It doesn't give us that. It doesn't tell us how many individual trucks there are. It doesn't say, you know, there's 120 trucks. So we can go back and you know, figure out 120 divided by 7 or um, go about that route. But it does tell us that there's a total of 192 passenger cars and pickup trucks. So the idea with these ones is, this is what I call the total problems, you know. We have to figure out what the total is. Well, the total is, you know, the cars, it'd be like if I added up all these different groups of cars plus all these different trucks, you know, we have to add it all together. So we're really saying that all of this is equal to 192. Okay, so then what we go through is we figure out that, I don't want to say the wrong numbers, we use a calculator. So we've got 192, and we are dividing that by, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 12 groups. So 192 divided by all 12 of those groups, because they have, remember these groups are evenly sized all the time, and that gives us 16, which that means that each one of those little groups or those boxes are, a lot of times in class we describe them as, um, you know, semi-trucks with cars on them, something. We, these are all 16, all of them are 16. I'm not gonna, you know, they're all 16. So that way you could figure out how many of each individual vehicle there was because you could do 16 times 5. So 16 times 5 is 80. 80, and then you would have 16 for the cars. Right, cars. And then 16 times 7 would give us... 112 yes, trucks. So we set the tape diagram up the exact same. The only difference was instead of them saying that 
you know, the cars were so many and dividing that up, they're giving us the total of it. So we have to take into account all of the different groups. One more coming.